Hi, I'm Cori Barger, and this is Bassoon Lessons Online. I am here to help you become a more confident bassoonist, and I hope that some of these exercises help you. Hit subscribe, and you will be alerted to all my videos, and uh, tell your friends. One of the questions that my students always ask me is, why do we have to play long tones? They are torture, they're so boring, and to that I say, no, they're not. They are a very important tool, but you have to know what it is that you want to achieve with this tool. Sometimes if you just sit down to practice something and you don't have a plan, then you are going to be bored, you're going to be overwhelmed, and you're going to want to stop immediately. So I recommend that you always have an objective in mind. If your teacher is telling you to practice long tones, ask them what exactly it is that they want you to achieve out of it. And if it's you yourself that thinks that you should be practicing long tones, ask why. So I think that there are three main objectives when we are practicing long tones. The first is stability of your sound. You want to be able to hold the tone out for uh, however long you decide um, in order to make sure that the sound is very consistent. So here you want to sit with your tuner on your stand and play the tone and decide how long you want to hold it stable for um, or notice how long you can hold it stable before it starts to waver. Then you want to build on that each day by extending the amount of time that you can hold the tone steady. While you're playing, don't just stare at the tuner mindlessly. You want to know how much information you can get out of this. I am looking for a couple of things when I play long tones. First of all, I'm listening to as much information as I can. I want to hear the different qualities of the sound, and I'm also thinking of ways that I can describe it, because if you can describe something, it's a lot easier to measure it and to then change it if you want to change it. You may have already realized that it's kind of difficult to describe sound. Frank Zappa once said that writing about music is like dancing about architecture, and that of course is a great metaphor because it doesn't make any sense. It's hard to describe music, and it's hard to describe sound in particular, so most of the time there's no one real correct way to do this, and I rely a lot on metaphors. As long as you're speaking the same language as your teacher, or as long as you're consistently speaking the same language as yourself, and then you can actually measure what it is that you're hearing, um, this will be helpful for you. So, you hold out the tone, and you're looking for stability, and you're listening for as many details as you can hear. Do you hear any wobbles? Do you hear any extra vibrations? Do you hear overtones? Do you, can you describe the color of the sound? Think about how much information you can get. Then you want to notice what you can feel. One of the things about creating stability in your sound is making sure that all of the muscles that are involved are doing their job in a stable way. And if you're feeling any trembling in your embouchure, that is going to be a big red flag. If you're feeling any trembling anywhere else in your body, maybe any tightness in your throat, tightness in your chest, these kinds of things are things to look out for. Whenever you're practicing long tones and you are focusing just on the sound, it's also important to notice whatever physical things that you can, because then that's another way that you can reproduce these things. The second way that people practice long tones is to expand your dynamic range. If you are basically like any other bassoon player, we only have a dynamic range of like mezzo piano to mezzo forte. We're not really the loudest instrument in the ensemble by any means, and we're definitely not the softest either. So we have to really push it to make sure that our dynamic range is something that's in line with the rest of the ensemble that we're playing with. If you want to get quieter, you have to start out at a comfortable sound in your long tone and then make your diminuendo until you lose the sound, like this. Also, you want to make sure that you do have your tuner here because it's very easy to get pitch changes when you are reducing your dynamic. So you might experience something like this. And then the sound kind of stops, 
that's the lowest dynamic that I got with that level of air, embouchure engagement, support. See what each of those factors will do in helping you to create a more consistent sound. And then as you practice day after day, you will be able to extend the diminuendo, just like in the previous exercise where you could extend the amount of time that you're going to play the long tone for. Notice how much you can quantify your own dynamic. If you're calling something mezzo forte, you want to know what that feels like and know what that sounds like to you. If you're calling something forte, obviously it needs to be louder. But dynamics are really subjective, so it's important for us to decide what it is exactly that we are actually doing. My idea of mezzo forte may be different than someone else's, and it's really all about contrast. So make sure that you have as much of a difference between your dynamics as possible. And when you're trying to build this difference, this is a great way to use long tones. The third thing that you want to look for when you are working on your long tones is the color of your sound. We can get a lot of different colors out of one particular note. And this is another thing that's very hard to describe. So you have to come up with your own vocabulary or with working with your teacher, come up with ways to describe these things that you want to change. We have specific words that we often use to describe tone color, like dark or bright. And usually that means what overtones are present in the sound. If some, a sound is bright, you're going to have a lot of high overtones. If a sound is dark, you'll have fewer high overtones. In order to use your long tones to figure out how to change these things, you first have to be able to describe the sound and then figure out what it is that you can change to get a change in the sound itself. Maybe you need to change something inside your mouth. Maybe you need to find some tension somewhere in your body and work on releasing that. As you play the long tones, you can hear what changes and then you can scan your body to figure out where that change might be felt so that you can look for any tension. A lot of my students have tension in their throat and this creates a kind of tight sound Kind of like this. It's a little bit aggressive and a little bit brittle. If I were trying to release tension in my throat, I would choose a note first of all that I could play with one hand so that then I could use my hand to help give my brain a little bit of a cue to focus on that area. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to release tension in the throat as I play. So listen to what changes. You could hear the sound get darker, you could hear the pitch get lower, and you could hear a wobble. Whenever you're changing something, if you're releasing any tension, most of the time you're going to have a little bit less control. And this is one thing that long tones are really good for helping you with, is again, maintaining the control like we were talking about at the beginning. If you want to improve your sound, you can go to www.bassoonlessonsonline.com where you can download an exclusive lesson about improving your tone in three simple steps. I hope that these ideas help you. And let me know if you have any questions about other topics on the bassoon. Leave me a comment. I'm really interested to hear what sorts of things you want help with. Hit subscribe and share with as many friends as you can. Thank you very much.